Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Final Warriors Corner of Day One. Uh, please enjoy this video presentation and then welcome Brigadier General Andrew Brasford, Commanding General 95th Division, 108th Training Command, who will speak on increasing drill sergeant mission readiness. When I first got in the Army, when I first enlisted and I showed up to my basic training unit and I saw my drill sergeant, I saw how professional they were, how expert they were, the way they talked, the way they walked, the way they pre presented themselves, the impact that they had on us, and everyone can remember their drill sergeant. You may not remember your teacher, your first grade teacher, or any of the teachers you've had or your coaches you've had, but I remember every single drill sergeant I had. I remember their names, I can see them clearly in my head and they had such a big impact on me that I knew from an early time in the Army that I wanted to be a drill sergeant at some point, especially when I became a non-commissioned officer. When I got some experience as a non-commissioned officer, I knew that being a drill sergeant was the next step that I wanted to take in my Army career because I wanted to have that impact on soldiers that my drill sergeants had on me. I believe that the Reserve Drill Sergeant program is an integral part of the overall Drill Sergeant Corps. Our Reserve Drill Sergeants bring a lot to the table because they bring that civilian life experience to the active Army. When we have our Reserve Drill Sergeants coming down on the trail to assist our active duty counterparts, you have all kinds of life experience coming there. You have city, uh, civil engineers, you have city managers, you have people from all walks of life bringing that experience down to the brand new soldiers at basic combat training. That's the type of experience that they may not get from active duty drill sergeants. And just the amount of maturity, knowledge, life experience that reserve drill sergeants have, it's so important to bring that to uh, basic training. Well, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome. Welcome to our friends from Norway, especially. Uh, my name is Andrew Bassford, as they said. I am the commanding general of the 95th Division, which is one of the Army Reserve's drill sergeant divisions. Everyone knows that America's Army Reserve provides logistics and engineers and military police, all of those folks who are key enablers to the operating force. But not everyone realizes that America's Army Reserve also provides drill sergeants, but we do. Uh, we are here, and our drill sergeants are awesome. And if you take nothing else away from this presentation, all you have to do is remember that we are here, and we have some incredibly awesome drill sergeants. We're proud to be a fully integrated part of TRADOC's initial military training enterprise. Slide. There are a lot of exciting things going on in the Army right now. Uh, you heard what the Secretary told us this morning about uh, changes in the Army and the way it's trained and the size of it. All of that falls into TRADOC because TRADOC, of course, is who provides the new soldiers who are going to be part of America's future force. And the TRADOC commander's intent for initial military training is to instill discipline and fitness, improve the leader-to-lead ratio, building lethality and building readiness. Right now, as I said, there's a lot going on in the Army. The Army is increasing its end strength. As you heard, it's expanding the length of infantry OSIT tremendously. And as we heard this morning, we're going to be extending the length of CAV Armor OSIT next year and Engineer OSIT after that. We're achieving gender integration across all of the MOSs that were traditionally male MOSs. We're converting AIT cadre leadership from platoon sergeants to drill sergeants to ensure that our new soldiers are more disciplined when they reach their first unit of assignment. And oh, by the way, the surveys of first unit commanders tell us that that's the number one thing they want from a new soldier is that they are disciplined. 
And we are implementing a total restructure of the basic training program of instruction, going to the Hammer Anvil Forge model, which is a complete change in how our soldiers are trained and how they're stressed as they go through the training process. Well, these are all great new initiatives, but they increase the Army's demand for drill sergeants, and they stress the active component's capabilities. And that's where America's Army's Reserve comes in. The 108th Training Command is the critical asset to help fill these gaps and ensure mission success as TRADOT continues to transform initial military training. Uh, the 108th is already operationalized and engaged in this fight. The 108th Training Command is made up of approximately 7,200 soldiers with three divisions, the 95th, the 98th, and the 104th. And across those three divisions, the 108th has 2,700 drill sergeant authorizations located in 44 states and in Puerto Rico. Uh, we routinely have drill sergeants on mission at all of the Army training centers. We have drill sergeants who support basic cadet summer training every year. We have drill sergeants who support the United States Military Academy in their training every summer. We have drill sergeants that support advanced individual training at all of the schoolhouses all across the country, including helping out with the holdover and the hold under population. In other words, we already pretty much touch every new soldier who is entering the Army. And you may wonder, can we be ready and responsive? Can we be good partners to what the active Army is doing? Uh, I think our track record would be the answer to that is yes. Uh, you may recall, if you think back about a year to January or so of 2017, when the President signed the order directing the expansion and the overall size of the Army. Well, that posed somewhat of a problem because the Army didn't have the capacity to train those new soldiers. Uh, so at the end of February, we got the word to field a battalion headquarters and eight companies of drill sergeants. So from the end of February until the end of May is what it took us to put a battalion headquarters and companies on the ground ready to go in training. So very short time getting folks on the ground for the Leonard Wood mission. And that's an ongoing mission. Uh, we still have a battalion and six companies on the ground at Fort Leonard Wood, and we look forward to having more on the ground later. We are essentially able to be good partners to the active component because of the quality of our drill sergeants. And I think there is a video in there. The quality of our drill sergeants is really what we bring to the table. Uh, they are, I believe, second to none. Rather than just tell you how wonderful our people are, uh, I'd like you to meet a handful so maybe you can judge for yourself. Now, the folks we brought in, we didn't bring in because they were polished public speakers. Uh, we didn't give them a script to memorize. They're here because they've excelled at, at one point or another in the things that we do. Uh, 
and I think you'll find that they are awesome. Sergeant Noble. Hello, everyone. I'm Drill Sergeant Noble. I joined the Army Reserves right after high school as a 68 Whiskey Combat Medic. Then about five years in to being a medic, I received an email looking for drill sergeant candidates. At the time, I didn't even know you could be a drill sergeant in the reserves, but I met all the qualifications and thought it would be a great opportunity, so I took it. Right after graduating college, I went to drill sergeant school and earned my hat and badge in 2016. On the civilian side, I do construction and I flipped a few houses, which I can kind of relate that to being a drill sergeant. You know, I've bought some fixer uppers where others would walk in, look around, be like, yeah, right, you can't fix this, and walk out. But where others see problems, I can see potential. Just hand me a sledgehammer or knife hand, and I can get to work. Tear down all those old, filthy walls full of bad habits, clean out all the garbage, and make room to build strong walls. Clean it up, tidy it up, dress right, dress, and build it full of character. And that's what us drill sergeants do. We have nine weeks to transform a civilian into a highly motivated, well-disciplined, physically and mentally fit soldier. You know, on that first day of pickup, we're yelling in their faces, they're hating us. But by graduation day, they're coming up to us and they're thanking us for that. And that's a great feeling, knowing all my time and effort of trying to instill discipline and motivation into these soldiers made a difference. So besides the long hours, losing sleep, losing my voice, besides all that, I truly enjoy being a drill sergeant in America's Army Reserve. Thank you. Drill Sergeant Noble, uh, in her last full cycle at Fort Sill, was selected by her active component counterparts as Drill Sergeant of the Cycle. So the Drill Sergeant out there who did the best job on the ground in training new soldiers, and if you get a sense of her passion and professionalism, you may understand why that happened. As an organization, bringing quality Drill Sergeant candidates into our formation is one of our largest challenges. Uh, unlike in the active component, Every one of our drill sergeants is a volunteer. They want to join us. We don't tell the Army to give them to us. Uh, so we have to go out there. We have to find them. We have to make sure they're qualified. And then we have to train them before we can ever put them on the trail to use in support of TRADOC. So you've got to find people who want to do a very challenging job, and they've got to have the ability to do it. And that narrows the pool a great deal. And that causes us to have to go out into the wider army looking everywhere we can to find people who are capable of being the drill sergeants we need. Uh, we have relationships with the Army's transition centers where people who are coming off of active duty, we try to convince them to stay in the reserve forces and come be drill sergeants for us. We have built significant relationships within the Army Reserve itself, uh, not only with the career counselors and the Army Reserve recruiters, but also with units that we can prevail on to send us occasionally qualified soldiers. Uh, we have reached across to the Army National Guard suggesting to them that drill sergeant duty is in fact a key broadening assignment that if we uh, borrow your non-commissioned officer for perhaps three years, we will give them back to you much better because they've been doing duty that they would not have a chance to do otherwise. And if you think about it, drill sergeant duty is indeed a very key broadening assignment. Uh, it makes better non-commissioned officers. I am fond of saying that what we are doing when we train drill sergeants is we are actually training the future first sergeants and command sergeants major of the Army. So as an organization, when it comes to recruiting, we do a great deal of self-help. And Staff Sergeant Johnson, Drill Sergeant Johnson, is the tip of that spear. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Drill Sergeant Johnson. I represent the 108th Training Command. Uh, in the civilian world, I am a police officer in Louisville, Kentucky. There's a challenge to basing, to, as you were, to balancing your civilian lifestyle with a successful military career. And I think that key to that challenge is just notification. As long as I notify my civilian employer when Battle Assembly Weekend is and when my annual training is, I'm able to balance the two. And I'm here as an example to tell you it is possible to, to have a successful career in both your civilian world and also in the, the military. As a Army Reservist, currently, my assignment, I'm on a mission working with the 108th Training Command in that recruiting aspect. As the commander stated, 
right now I'm going around to the active duty transition centers, working with those soldiers that are transitioning from active duty, trying to get them into the reserve component. And the biggest challenge I face is that a lot of the soldiers I'm talking to don't have a clue that the Army Reserves has drill sergeants, let alone that they're qualified for it. So in talking to them, I'm educating them. And educating them as well as the career counselors has been a, something that we have to do. That education goes a long way. And also talking about that key broadening assignment that it is. It's hard to explain to somebody the career progression that they can have once you have that career broadening assignment. And drill sergeant is a key one of those. One of the other things I've been doing is working with our partners in the National Guard, trying to bring those soldiers from the National Guard into the Army Reserves to try to get them that key leadership experience. Because it's not something that you can learn in the schoolhouse. Something you learn on the trail being a drill sergeant up in front of trainees, that's something that you, you will learn on the streets, if you will. You'll learn it there, and you can take that with you as you further your career. I'll tell you this much, though. Being a drill sergeant has been the biggest challenge I've faced so far in my military career. However, this mission that I'm currently on right now, helping to recruit and retain quality drill sergeants, is something that will, I will forever enjoy because of the fact that I know that the drill sergeant community will be better off once I leave it than when I came and found it. Thank you. And in fact, Drill Sergeant Johnson's team has been very successful over the last year. They brought in from the various sources more than 200 Drill Sergeant candidates, which in the scheme of, of the greater army may not be a big number, but in our world, that's huge because that's the equivalent of about four battalions worth of Drill Sergeants. Um, and Sergeant Johnson was the leader in all that production, so he's done a great job in his recruiting role. Uh, now, as the Army moves to full gender integration, it's very important to have female role models for the new female soldiers who are coming into traditionally male MOSs. The 108th Training Command is supporting that initiative. Drill Sergeant Alvarado? Good afternoon, everybody. My hometown, I am Drill Sergeant Alvarado. My hometown is Puerto Rico. So five years ago, I decided to join the best America's Army Reserve. All right. So I went on my first mission to Afghanistan. I noticed the lack of motivation. I noticed the lack of discipline, and that needed to change. I also wanted that life which I can balance my civilian and my education. I'm a DOD contractor, and I'm going to go to law school next year, right? So I needed that discipline and motivation myself. So what I did, I came back, I went, Drill Sergeant Academy, outstanding, all right? And right after that, I became 11 Bravo, reclass. So at this point, I'm not only telling females and everybody else to encourage yourself and be a leader. As a drill sergeant, be a leader, as an NCO. The best part of being a drill sergeant is self-fulfilling. Self-fulfilling, whole way. You get to create soldiers, and you get to create the best soldiers of the best army of the world. So as we move to female and gender integration of combat arms in the army, female role models are needed. And I'm talking to you, all right? So this is all I'm going to tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen. You, have, you are born twice in life the day you're born, and the day you find a purpose, all right? Follow me. It's worth mentioning that Drill Sergeant Alvarado was the very first female infantry drill sergeant coming out of the United States Army Reserve. Um, in her last rotation at Fort Jackson, she was also a drill sergeant of the cycle as selected by her active component peers. Uh, so excellence all across the board. Now, I'd like you to meet Drill Sergeant Crawford. Drill Sergeant Crawford, on his civilian side, is a police officer in Kenosha, Wisconsin, which is a long way from most places. And somehow in the course of also being a police officer and being a soldier in America's Army Reserve, he went on to become, to win the competition to become, the United States Army's Drill Sergeant of the Year for 2018. Notice I didn't say 
the Army Reserve's Drill Sergeant of the Year, he went on to become the Army's Drill Sergeant of the Year for 2018. And before that, as kind of a boring warm-up, he was the distinguished honor graduate from his Drill Sergeant class at the Academy as well. Um, the other fun fact is that Drill Sergeant Crawford got married two days ago, and he and his lovely bride are here doing what is the most eccentric honeymoon ever, I think. So, and the final person worth pointing out is Second Lieutenant Moeller. Um, he would be the most junior second lieutenant, I think, in the Army. He's been uh, a second lieutenant since the 30th of September, 30th of September. Prior to that time, he was Senior Drill Sergeant Moeller, who in 2016, again, out of the 95th Division, was the United States Army's non-commissioned officer of the year. Another one of our drill sergeants who went on to excel and decided that uh, maybe it would be better to be a, a lieutenant instead. I'm not sure why, but uh, there you go. So thank you. So folks, you've met these five great soldiers, but what you need to realize is that our battalions and brigades are filled with plenty more just like them. Uh, the drill sergeants you've met really aren't exceptions. You know, I would be confident that any one of our drill sergeants going on mission could be the drill sergeant of the cycle. It, it wouldn't trouble me in the least to, to have them compete for that sort of thing. They all have some things in common. First of all, they do this mission because they love this mission. Most of them have full-time civilian careers they have to balance. Most of them have families that they need to balance. But despite the civilian careers and despite the families, they've chosen to do something that is very, very demanding. And even more so, they knew going into it that it was very, very demanding. They want to get out on mission. They want to train soldiers. They want to make better soldiers. And they want to do the right thing. They want to be excellent. So the bottom line, when the initial military training enterprise has challenges to meet, be that increasing the overall Army in strength, be that changing the way that we train our new soldiers so that we better instill discipline, better instill fitness, uh, make those new soldiers ready to get out of the force, TRADOT can continue to turn to America's Army Reserve and be confident, absolutely confident, that our drill sergeants will be there, they'll be trained, they'll be ready, and they'll be more than able to meet any challenge. Thank you. Now I probably have time for questions, if there are questions. I've explained it so well, there are no questions. Okay, folks, well, thank you very much. It's been my pleasure.